And in this video, we're going to go through visualizing summary statistics on our data sets using Pandas and Seaborn. So we're back in the Chapter 2 Jupyter Notebook. And in this video, we're going to talk about visualizing summary statistics. If you're not aware, actually Pandas also offers quite a bit of visualization power. As with any video, we first start importing the requisite packages. In N2, we're first importing matplotlib.pyplot as plt for our plotting purposes. We then import numpy as np for our scientific computing purposes. And finally, we're importing pandas as pd for our data wrangling purposes. And obviously, this video's purpose is to show you the range of plotting functions that pandas possesses. In the last line of in2, we are setting the matplotlib command to inline, which allows us to show plots without calling the plot.show function. The next thing for us to do is to create some dummy data. In in4, we're putting in the variable ts a series of a thousand random numbers generated by numpy, so np.random.ranN. We want to plot these, so actually, the easiest thing to do is to call ts, which is a panda series, dots plots. In in5, we do exactly this, and we can see that an axis of plot object pops up and plots what looks like white noise on the screen. That is exactly what, where we want it to be. And we have this because we're plotting a thousand random numbers distributed normally. The next thing I want to show you is how pandas can actually handle the plotting of multiple different series and correctly label them. In N6, we're creating a data frame off of a data set of a thousand random numbers over four columns. And each column is named A, B, C, and D, respectively, by feeding in a list of these characters into the column's keyword argument. In the second line, we are assigning DF to itself but applying the cumulative sum transformation by calling the comSum function on data frame. In the last line, we are calling df.plot. And a very handy trick that I'm going to show you here that is going to save you some time and make your code and presentation simpler. And this one little trick is in the last line, you can see that we have added a semicolon at the end of the line. And that basically means that we don't have this very ugly axis subplot information that we see in out5. So in in6, we don't actually have an output, so there's no out6. And the plot just appears because of df.plot. And the last line is actually empty. So this is what that little trick does. So because we have created this little semicolon here, the last line to Jupyter is actually empty, so there's no outputs. But then because the plotting function and the matplotlib inline flag has been set, we actually see that the plot pops up without any extra information. So here you can see, much like what we have covered in video one, we have plotted the sort of random walks of A, B, C, and D. It's colored correctly and it's distributed from zero to a thousand very nicely by pandas. What if we want to plot just one series and plot one aspect against the other? We can do that. In N7, we're plotting X against Y. And basically what's happening is we're plotting the values of column A against column B. And here you see a classic random walk where the series just basically meanders randomly within a space of 0 to 10. It goes beyond this. If we want to plot a bar chart, we can specify kind 
of charts that pandas is plotting in n9 we're specifying that we want to plot the 15th data points of df to do this we call df.i location indexed location feed in 15 and call the plot function so the plot function is then fed a keyword argument of kind with a value of bar and that creates a bar plot for us we might also want to plot all four columns at the same time. Here in N3, we are assigning a new data frame to DF, which is only 10 data points and four columns. Again, the columns are A, B, C, and D. And if we simply call plot.bar on the entire data frame, we can see that all 10 data points come up with each of the four columns visualized in four different colors. A common application in bar charting is to stack different categories. In N4, we're calling df.plot.bar, feeding in the keyword argument stacked with a value of true. We can now see that in the outputs, we again see 10 data points as we expect, but each of the columns value is now actually stacked up against one another. Another common use case is to make a horizontal bar plot. In this case, what we want to do is actually call the bar h function instead of the bar function. Again, we're still stacking this, and we can see that there's a very neat stacked bar plot coming up. Sometimes what we want to do is to create a histogram. And so here we can use df.plot in insects.hist, h-i-s-t, to plot a histogram. As you can see, we are seeing all four columns at the same time and they sort of hide behind one another. If we want to solve this, we can feed in a new keyword argument. So in N7, we're creating a df.plot.hist, feeding in a keyword argument stacked equals to true. And we can now see that each data point within A, B, C and D are all independently displayed on a stacked histogram. Another interesting one is the box plot. So here in N8, the call is very simple. We're calling df.plot.box. And here we have a box plot that plots the four quartiles of each column A, B, C, and D, and also the median denoted by the green line. The last plot I'm going to show you is the area plot, and that's very simple as well. It's simply calling plot.area. In N10, we're creating a new pandas data frame with 10 random numbers over four columns. The columns are again A to D in lowercase this time. And we directly take this data frame and call the plot.area plot function, creating the following area plot plots. And that's all there is to it. In the next video, we're going to begin a new section on exploratory data analysis in Python. Stick around and I'll see you guys next time.